Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And a very good evening to all of you Today, uh, for the next subtopic, I will present about the advances in medical technologies So, first of all, my name is Anis Arifah binti Salim Okay, first is the definition of medical technology Okay, medical technology is defined as the application of science to develop solutions to health problems or issues such as the prevention or delay of onset of disease or the promotion and monitoring of good health. Okay, if we talk about the technology and medical, there is a strong correlation between these two fields because medical require the needs of technology for its development and also continuity and technology and medicine have gone hand in hand for many years and the consistent advances in the medical field also have saved millions of lives and also improved many others and as the years uh, pass by and technology continues to improve so there is no telling what advances will come next so in this subtopic we will discuss on a few advances technologies in the medical field that have been developed okay the next slide show us uh, the timeline or the journey of the medical technology okay from the stethoscope to the human genome i think we are all agreed that with a lot of inventions and innovations that have been made uh, it definitely changed and improved the medical uh, progress in a positive way nowadays. Okay, for the first technology that we have here is uh, 3D printing. Okay, what is actually 3D printing? Okay, it is a manufacturing technology that generates a physical model from digital information, meaning that it, it is a process that creates a 3D object by building successive layers of raw material. And how it works actually, um, each new layer is attached to the previous one until the object is complete. And usually the objects that are produced uh, come from the digital 3D file such as computer aided design CAD drawing or from the MRI image. Okay, so that's how the 3D printing works. Okay, usually 3D printing is used to create the specific drops and also to produce the medical implants for medicine and surgeries. Okay, the other roles of 3D printing is to customize surgical tools and prosthesis, meaning that the 3D printing also can be used to manufacture the custom implants or the surgical guides that needed in the surgery procedures. Next is to personalize drug 3D printing or personalized medicine. Okay, how drug is produced via 3D printing? Okay, actually the 3D printing of drugs consists of the printing out the powdered drug layer. Uh, usually, we have the medicine in a form of a tablets or pills, but using this 3D printing, it will produce the medicines in a form of powder, which make it dissolve faster than the average pills. Okay, next is to improve the forensic practice. Okay, so how the 3D printing is relayed in the forensic case? In the courtroom, usually a 3D model could be used to easily demonstrate various anatomic abnormalities or injury uh, that may be difficult for the jury members, for the judges to understand using their imaginary. Okay, so, this 3D model will help them to understand better and to evaluate the cases. Okay, last but not least is bioprinting. Okay, the 3D printing also allow the modeling of implantable tissues. For example, in some of the brain injury cases, the 3D printing 
will produce a kind of synthetic skin that can be transplanted back to the patient's skins that suffer um, from burn injuries. Okay, for the next is laparoscopic surgery. Uh, laparoscopy, also known as diagnostic laparoscopy, is a surgical diagnostic procedure which is used to examine the organs inside the abdomen. Okay, so how laparoscopy surgery works? Okay, it actually involves a laparoscope. As you can see at the top image here, uh, that is a laparoscope which is a long fiber optic cable system that consists of the high intensity light and also the camera at the front. Okay, this laparoscope is inserted through an incision through an ins uh, through a small incision in the abdominal wall. Okay, so as it moves along, uh, the camera will sense uh, the image to a video monitor which it helps the doctor to see the organs. Okay, what are its advantages? First, to reduce the risk of bleeding. Okay, because the size of the incision made is so much smaller than the large incision that is made for the open surgery, so this will reduce the likelihood of a blood transfusion being needed uh, to compensate for the blood loss. Okay, second, reduce the pain. Okay, because of the smaller incision size that have been made, so it also reduces the risk of pain and bleeding after surgery. Uh, compared to the open surgery, when a large incision has been made, patients will usually require a long-term pain relief medication while the stage line heals. So by the laparoscopic surgery, the post-surgical wound is much smaller and the healing process uh, would be less painful. Okay, the third is uh, reduce the post-operative infection. Okay, compared to the open surgery, in the laparoscopic surgery, the exposure of the internal organs to external contaminants is significantly reduced because of the smaller incision that have been made. Okay, the last is the smaller scar formation. It is because the laparoscopic surgery only involves a small incision at the abdomen wall so that it would form a smaller scar which is not too large and not too obvious. Okay, for the next technology that we have here is the surgical and medical robotic. Okay, the robotic surgery are types of surgical procedures that are done using a robotic system. It says here that uh, the robotically assisted surgery was developed to try to overcome the limitations of pre-existing minimally invasive surgical procedures, which means uh, the robotic surgery is to overcome or to cope the limitations from the surgery that have been done and it also uh, to increase to enhance the capabilities of the surgeons in performing the open surgery okay so how the surgical robotic perform the surgery okay basically we have two conditions here the first is uh, the doctor will allow the robotic systems to undergo the surgery fully on their own but monitored uh, by the medical team second is uh, the robot the robotic system is only there to help the doctors in performing surgery it means that uh, the robot is their assistance in performing the surgeries okay uh, by using the robotic system first uh, they will make a uh, tiny incisions uh, on the body and they will insert a uh, miniaturized instruments and also a 3d camera and sometimes uh, they does not require skin incisions at all uh, then uh, from a nearby console okay the surgeon uh, will manipulate those instruments uh, to perform the operation by the robotic system 
Okay, so what are the advantages for both patients and surgeons by using the surgical and medical robots? Okay, first for the patients, uh, it results to more precise surgeries. Okay, uh, often the, uh, our surgeons need to operate near the healthy and sensitive organs, but by using the robotic systems, uh, they only focus on the affected area and the goal is to remove the abnormality without uh, affecting the surrounding healthy structure. So uh, because of the small size and the flexibility of the robotic instruments, so it will make uh, the surgery is easier to accomplish. Second is less risk of infection and blood loss. Okay, by using the surgical robotic, it will make tiny incisions, smaller incisions rather than a larger one in the open surgery. So it just lowering and just reducing the risk of infection or blood loss uh, to the patients. This is less carrying and shorter recovery. Same uh, as the previous uh, reasons because of the smaller incisions that also mean that the recovery period is shorter and sometimes uh, recovery may last just a few days and they also result in less scarring. Okay, in many cases, uh, surgeries that performed by the robotic systems will give uh, better clinical outcomes rather than from the open surgeries. For the surgeon's uh, benefits, first is it provides enhanced visual field. Okay, at the controller or at the console, the surgeon has a superior view of the operating area because of the high definition camera that provides a detailed and a clearer view of the affected area so that the surgeon can see the microscopic structures more clearly which is leading to a more precise surgery. And next is superior dexterity. Okay, what is meant by superior dexterity? Um, a human hand can only move so much but uh, the robotic instruments assist the dexterity and also the range of motion of the human hand means that the robotic can do what is beyond the human capability. So uh, the arms of the robotic instruments can rotate a fully 360 degrees and in this situation, uh, it will allow the surgeon to operate in a way that would be impossible without the robotic system. Next is access to hard to reach body parts. Okay, because of the enhanced flexibility and also the precision of the robot, so it will allow the surgeon to access to hard to reach areas or to the deeper internal organ or parts. Okay, this means uh, the surgeon uh, can treat more conditions with the robotic surgeries or robotic system.
Okay, next is about the telehealth. Okay, what is telehealth? Okay, the telehealth is the use of digital information and communication technologies such as computers and also uh, smartphones just to access healthcare services remotely and to manage our healthcare. Meaning that by using the telehealth, the patient does not need to go to the hospital or clinic just to see their doctor for their appointment. But by using the uh, smartphones or computer, they can have their appointment uh, with their doctors, but virtually. Services included in the telehealth is the patient portal, virtual appointments, uh, remote monitoring, personal health records, and also the personal health apps. And next is for the goal of telehealth. The first one is to provide access uh, to the patients and specialists okay for the uh, patients uh, by using the telehealth it makes uh, healthcare is accessible to people who is especially live in the rural or isolated communities but for the specialist or the doctor although they are having their appointments with the patients uh, virtually but they still can manage and treat their patients through the services in the telehealth. Okay, next is uh, to make telehealth is readily available to people with restrictions. Okay, um, telehealth will make services more readily available or convenient for people with uh, restrictions uh, or with the limited mobility time or transportation options because uh, they do not they do not need to go to the hospitals but only uh, using their smartphones or computer they can assess their healthcare virtually okay the next is to provide support for self management of healthcare okay meaning that uh, by using telehealth the patients or people can manage their own healthcare uh, but still monitored by their doctors. Okay, next technology is AcuVein. Okay, AcuVein is a vein illumination device that facilitates locating peripheral vasculature by displaying a map of vasculature directly on the patient's skin. Okay, in a simpler term, um, AcuVein is a vein finder that allow the doctors or nurses to quickly find a patient's vein without undue hassle or trauma to the patient. And this can be particularly helpful for those patients with uh, the difficult venous assess. Okay, um, usually we will see that in most cases, the doctors and nurses will have a difficulty in finding the patient's um, patient's vein but using this AcuVein or the vein finder uh, it first will map the peripheral vasculature on the wrist and by that uh, the nurse will directly insert the, uh, the uh, IV catheter uh, into the skin without having to repeat it multiple times Okay, next, uh, Akiven have two functions, which is the first is to determine the vein locations and second to visualize those locations on patient's body in the real time. Okay, so how this Akiven actually works? Okay, first, uh, the nurse uh, have to hold the Akiven about 7 inches above the patient's skin and the infrared light will be appear and the hemoglobin will be absorbed this infrared light and the veins will appear noticeably different than the surrounding tissues and by that uh, it will display a map of vasculature directly on the patient's skin okay by this uh, the nurse can determine the right vein location for the patients Vein Viewerflex is a solution to the challenge of patients with difficult venous access. With easy to use controls, the device features multiple modes ideal for a range of patients from the very young to those with conditions which make venous access especially difficult.
Through the use of near-infrared technology, Vane Viewer Flex can project a real-time image of the venous pathway directly onto the surface of the skin. The available modes are suitable for a range of skin tones and applications. Vane Viewer Flex can be mounted for hands-free, eyes-on patient use using the clamps and arm provided. The fast swap batteries allow continuous use. Mains power can also be used so that the device is always available. Vane Viewer comes complete with a range of accessories, including a two S-mount arms with two clamps. Okay, the next uh, technology that we have here is the health wearables. Okay, health wearables uh, include electronic devices, which is designed to collect the data of users' personal health and exercises. Okay, the data that they record uh, include uh, the heart rate, respiratory rate, sleep quality, our temperature, calorie level, and also the period, uh, monthly period tracking, and so much more. Okay, so the three images here are the examples of the health variable technologies. The first we have is fitness trackers. Okay, fitness trackers are wristbands that are equipped with the sensors to keep track of the user's physical activity and also heart rate. Okay, they provide uh, people with health and fitness recommendations. But first, we have to sync it to our smartphone apps. Okay, the second is we have here is the smart health watches. I think uh, you guys are familiar with this one, especially from the Apple brand. Okay, nowadays they have the latest uh, Apple Watch, which is the Apple Watch Series 6, I guess. Okay, the smart watches have the similar function as the health variable have, which is they can track almost all our health data, including heart rate, respiratory rate, uh, period tracking, uh, diet pattern and also so much more and apart from that they also perform the other tasks uh, including uh, reading notifications send notifications make phone calls and also they recommend us with some uh, health uh, and also exercises benefits okay the third one that we have here is the biosensors Okay, biosensor is different from both wrist tracker and smartwatches. Okay, it is a self adhesive patch that allow uh, people to move around while collecting data on their movement based on their heart rate, respiratory rate and also their temperature. Okay, so what are the advantages of the health wearable technology? Okay, the first is to encourage proactive healthcare. Okay, currently, the way that we deal with uh, any potential health issues is reactive, meaning that when we start to feel sick, pain, or anything out of the ordinary, we will definitely go to see a doctor. But by uh, wearable technology, there is potential for a more proactive approach to healthcare. Okay, meaning uh, the wearable uh, technology can be used to take action in the early stages instead of reacting to health issues after they begin causing problems. Okay, the second one is to keep patient engaged. Okay, most of the time, people will become much more engaged with their own healthcare if they are able to use wearable technology to monitor themselves. By getting access to real-time data, which is continuously collected from the device, uh, they will be able to stay informed about their own health condition, instead of having uh, the data collected only for the doctor's references. This wearable technology will help patients feel like they are in control of their own health by allowing them to monitor themselves. Okay, the third one is to perform many functions. There are many different types of uh, wearable devices that are available on the market with various different use of functions. 
Okay, uh, for example, we have variables that can monitor things like heart rate, respiratory rate, and uh, for the diabetic patients, they also have device that can continuously monitor glucose levels using uh, a sensor that connect to their smartphones. And the latest one, they also have the wearable device that can monitor UV exposure and also a uh, device to fix the cardiovascular rhythm. And as uh, wearable continue to become so much more common nowadays, and uh, it definitely have more medical uses for these devices, which will surely will be developed uh, in many years. Okay, the fourth one is benefit healthcare providers and also to the employers. Wearable technology has the potential to provide enormous benefits to healthcare providers, meaning that by using wearable devices to monitor their patient data over a long period of time, uh, the medical specialists uh, can get a better view of the issues that are affecting their patients, meaning uh, they can use the data to make a more accurate diagnosis than they would have been able to without using the device. Okay, the last one is to monitor vulnerable patients. Um, one of the unique applications of wearable technology is that it can be used to monitor vulnerable patients from a distance. Okay, the healthcare providers or the doctors can also use the wearable technology to monitor vulnerable patients who are prone to medical issues. Um, if they are at risk but not seriously ill enough to be in the hospital, this wearable technology can be used to monitor them at home to ensure there is no problem occur. And also, this wearable technology also can be used on patients when they return home after the surgery or an operation, which is to monitor their recovery and ensure there is no complications occur. Okay, for the last medical technology is the nanomedicine. Okay, nanomedicine is a medical application of nanotechnology which is include the use of nanomaterial and also the biological devices. Okay, nanomedicine is actually refers to the area of science that combines both nanotechnology with drugs or diagnostic molecules, which is to improve the ability to target specific cells or tissues. Okay, these materials are produced on a nanoscale level and are safe to introduce into the body. The applications for nanotechnology uh, in medicine include imaging, diagnosis, sensing, blood purification, tissue engineering, and also cell repair machine. Okay, one of the applications of nanomedicine is on the nanoparticle drug delivery system. Okay, so how the nanomedicine work? As we know that uh, the nano means tiny. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, and nanoparticles that use for drug delivery are usually in the 20 to 100 nanometer range, uh, but this also can be depending on the design of the nanoparticle itself. Okay, for the drug delivery system, the nanoparticles can be engineered and designed to package and transport drugs directly to where they are needed. Uh, this targeted approach means that the drugs will only cause most harm in the particular and the intended area of the tumor that they are delivered to. And because of that, it will minimize the damage to the surrounding healthy tissues and therefore will reduce the side effects.